This is a setup demonstration for the Joytech Ego AIO device. Inside the box, you will find the device itself with a pre-installed mouthpiece that has a little swirl inside the center of it to help prevent spitback. It does restrict the airflow of the mouthpiece a little bit, but it does also come with an extra mouthpiece that has a wide open airflow on it, which would be located inside the goodie box that also comes in your kit. It will contain micro USB cable for charging. It is strongly recommended to use a one amp output wall block to charge the device. Two coils to get you started and the other mouthpiece that is a little bit taller and has no swirl in the center. The device that I'm using to demonstrate with is one that we have used as a store model, but everything will apply the same to your brand new unit. Has a fire button on the front side right here. To turn the device on or off, you click this button five times quickly. One, two, three, four, five. And when you do, there is an LED inside the tank that will blink to indicate that it is powered on or powered off. This device is currently in the on position. There's also a micro USB port on the reverse side of the device for charging. To open the device to refill the tank or change your coil, you're going to take a look at this top cap section here. Now you'll notice that when the top cap is installed, there is still a gap between the top cap and the top of the body of the device. That's where the airflow enters the system so you can utilize it. To open it, it has a similar to a pill bottle child-proof mechanism. So what you'll need to do is press down, which will close that gap a little bit and turn, similar to a pill bottle, until it's loosened enough that you can just unscrew the rest of the way. If, when you are turning it to open it and you're not pressing down, this ring simply spins, that is because that is how you control the airflow on the device. If you look at the top ring here, you'll notice that there are two little dots, one that is attached to the center post where you insert your mouthpiece, and the other one is on this ring here that spins freely. To adjust your airflow, you will simply turn that ring. If you have them lined up so that they're next to each other or on opposite sides, that's going to be the widest open airflow that you can use. So if you think of it like the hands on a clock, if it's noon or six o'clock, that's going to be the airiest draw you can get. If you have the dots set to be a quarter turn apart, so three or nine o'clock, then that is going to be the most restrictive draw you can get. So you have about a quarter turn worth of airflow adjustment with this device. Also inside the top cap as part of it, you have the chimney for the device itself, on the bottom of which is where you will screw on your coil once you've primed it. To prime a coil, you'll take your coil and you'll be able to tell the top from the bottom because the bottom is simply going to have a metal plate to make contact inside the device to be able to heat the coil. And the top will have a hole down the center where you're going to want to put approximately six to eight drops of liquid when you're first priming the coil for the first time so that you can saturate the wicking material. The reason you need that saturated before you start to use it is because heat plus dry cotton equals burnt taste. And that burnt taste is usually how you can tell it's time to change your coil. So you don't want it to taste like that right out of the box. To prime brand new coil, you'll take your bottle of liquid and put eight drops down the center. Give it a drop, let it soak in for a second two, three, four, five, six, and you can see it's really starting to get primed up well now. The liquid is taking longer to saturate in. So we're gonna call it at six drops, though most brand new coils take more like eight drops to fill. Once you've done that, to install the coil, you will simply grasp the top cap. It is recommended because you have your airflow adjustment ring that spins freely to hold the chimney section the threading at the threading area while screwing the coil into place so that you can make sure to get it snug. You'll notice 
as I'm tightening on this coil, making sure I don't cross thread the coil, that there's a gasket seal right in between there. You want to make sure that it's on finger tight and snug enough that there's no more gap. This is very important because the height of the tank itself is measured to be exactly the height of the coil installed and the chimney. So if you do not screw your coil on all the way, that can over time push the internals of the device down and damage the inside of the device, in some cases making it so that the micro USB port no longer lines up with the hole for it. Now this only happens if you're not making sure you install your coil correctly. That being said, it's something we like to advise folks about because we have seen it happen to folks before. Once your coil is completely installed, you will fill the tank. Each device has a max fill line indicated on the body of the device. The silver toned device has it etched onto the side right here. It's about halfway up the glass. And that is because once you reinstall the coil and chimney section, that will displace some of the liquid. If you fill it above the recommended max fill line, it will tend to overflow and then you have a bit of a mess. The other color options that we have have slightly different max fill line locations. The solid black color option has it on the side like the silver one does, but it's in a slightly glossier black paint. So it can be a little bit difficult to see, but again, it's just about halfway up the glass. Whereas the two-tone editions, either the black and white, black and gray, or red and white options, their max fill line is going to be visible on the back side near the micro USB port, and it'll be where the paint color changes next to the glass. To fill the device, you simply take your bottle of liquid and squeeze the liquid into the main tank section until it reaches that max fill line. Then you can take your coil, chimney, and top cap assembly, drop it down into place, and make sure that you're not going to end up cross-threading it as you screw it into place, and then tighten it down. You can just screw it on normally until you get to the point where you can tell that it's just that airflow ring that's spinning and you can see the coil is no longer turning. Then you're going to want to give it that press down and turn until it skips over a catch like a pill bottle. You'll be able to feel it. And then it's fully installed. To change the color that the tank shines for this device, you'll want to make sure that you turn the device off with its five clicks. And while the device is off, press and hold the button until the tank light comes on. And let go of the button and then give it a firm press and let go to cycle through the different colors. I don't know how well they're going to show up on camera here, but there are several different color options you can use. The color of the liquid you're using will affect the color that you see from the tank light. Once you have selected the color that you want to use, you can just stop pressing the button and wait for the light to turn itself off. Then, when you give it the five clicks to turn it back on, now that is the color that the tank light will shine every time you take a puff. Another thing of note about this device is it does have a battery life indicator. When you use the device, you go to take a draw on it, you press and hold the button to activate the coil. When you release, the light will turn off and then it will come back on briefly to give you your battery life indicator. If at that time the light stays solidly lit for a couple of seconds and then turns off, you're at better than a two-thirds charge. If the light slowly blinks in and out, you're between a two-third and one-third charge. And if the light is blinking rapidly, that means you're at less than a one-third charge. When you plug the device in to charge it on the micro USB cable, no matter what color you have your tank light set to, the light inside the tank will shine red while it's charging and turn off when it's done. That's everything you need to know about the Joytech Ego AIO. Happy vaping!